In this video, we are going to talk about what it means to bow to the golf ball. Good title, uh, Milo. Bow to the golf ball. Bow to the ball. You know, worship those golfing gods, right? Yes. If you want to hit it well, you need to make them happy. All right, I think the viewers know what we're talking about. We're talking about staying in the shot, staying in your posture, getting into the ground, getting your chest down to the ball so you can really compress your irons, right? Flush those irons. For sure. Really good ball strikers as, you know, they start off with some amount of front forward bend. They swing up and then as they start down, this angle actually increases some amount, which makes their rear end kind of go back. It leads us back to that Tiger video mm -hmm. where he's doing some crazy getting his, his rear end back. He's bowing to the ball. What's happening is we're adding some hip flexion, so some hinge from our hips mainly, as well as some knee flex and a little bit of flex in our spine in a certain way. But really what I want to focus on is the adding the hip flexion. I think that that is a big key to good golf swings. So Henry, I wanted to talk about a, a drill that's really good for learning how to feel this bowing to the ball concept. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that alignment stick, you're gonna come around behind me, you're gonna put the alignment stick in front of me like this. Okay. And you're gonna keep it. So if you wanna stand back with your arms, just make it so it just barely stays off of me. Now as the player is moving, we wanna feel, see as I turn back, see how I didn't touch it with my left hip? So my right hip comes back, now as I start down, see how my, my rear end got farther away, I created some space there. And I can turn through and not touch it. See so what that feels like? Mm -hmm. So what, what do you mean I feel what it feels like? Do you feel what it feels like? Yes, <laughs> I meant you see what it looks like. Dana's laughing back there. This is all educational, by the way. We're having fun. So, okay. so, so you felt like your hips basically they're angled more in the downswing. They're angled more this way in the downswing. And they're also pushing back a little bit too. Yeah, because to balance me out, when I when my chest goes this way, my, my rear end has to go back. Because mm -hmm. if all I do is make my chest go this way. It's a little bit of a deadlift motion in a way, isn't it? Somewhat, like a squat. Mm -hmm. or, or if you're just going to pick something up, you wouldn't pick something up this way and get out on your toes. You'd almost fall into your ankles a little bit. Yeah, a little bit back this way onto your ankles. Mm -hmm. Your rear end goes into, goes back. So now we're using our glutes. Once I go, once I go to here, now my rear end is engaged. Mm -hmm. I get to use those big strong glutes. A big key is that feeling of adding some hip hands in transition. Okay. Now I'm going to give you another feel that our fellow academy coach, Ed Lassiter, talks about a lot. He talks about these buttons right here. Getting closer to... Getting closer to the left thigh and also kind of pointing down over here. Yep, so as I change directions here, my buttons feel like they're getting closer to my left leg mm -hmm. and pointed more over there. Like that, that makes me do the same deal. Yeah. And this goes back to also that belt buckle video, which we did a while back, and I'll tag it up above. That was a really good one that we did a drill too, where I put an alignment stick through my loops here. If gotta, I'll I, just put I, it right here. Manage that one. But I did this right here, and I basically swung, and I wanted the stick. You actually let me move over here. You had a you had a club over here, I believe. Yeah, something like that. And I had to go down underneath it yes. versus up into it for sure so however it is you know how if you if you feel the chest getting down if you feel the hip hinge the squat butt moving back in any case all of that's happening together to get that appearance that your chest is more down and yeah we're, we're every one of those fields is talking about the same thing what it's doing is it's creating a little bit of added hip flexion in the transition versus going the other way. Yeah. Now, okay, what about all those people that say they watch this video and they're like, that, that crap doesn't work, you're gonna chunk it. Because I hear that a lot. Me too. Because they're <laughs> like, oh, your head's dropping and you're gonna chunk it. Now, 
I will say when we have students try to make this motion at first, they might chunk it. In lessons, they, they tend to do chunk it. Yeah, nice. And they shank it too. Yeah. At first, sometimes. Chunks so. and shanks, but that's a good sign that something changed. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't get scared by that. I, I, I get encouraged. I'm okay, we're doing something new. Mm -hmm. There is an additional matchup that must be made if this is going to work. So I wanted to give you a sneak peek into MiloLinesGolf.com, an online academy devoted to helping you play better golf and learn to swing like an athlete. So I've assembled a, an awesome team of instructors to help me with this mission. And we've received some awesome feedback from the members of our site, and we've seen many of them make great strides toward improving their games. As a member of MiloLinesGolf.com, you get a monthly evaluation from myself or my team. You get a private space to track your progress. You also receive access to a live lesson library and a really large library of how-to videos. Access to our member-only webinars and you get to ask us questions to be answered live. You can have access to all these great things and much, much more. So let us help you play the best golf of your life. So visit us at the link below and join now. And what that is, is it's how our wrists and arms are going to work in transition. If I'm doing anything to apply a force that sends the club more out in front of me, then I will hit it fat. So if I'm pulling down or I'm throwing angles, yeah, this and this don't quite go together. No, they don't. This and this go together. So the hands staying up a little bit more. So they're in transition, you're gonna feel those hands just kind of floating up as we change directions. And we're also gonna feel the angles in our wrists going a little bit like this. So, so we're adding a little trail wrist extension mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of trail forearm supination to get the club more back. Those match up with the added hip flex. Yeah. If we don't do it, we will chunk it. Now let's also say this, we're not saying that in transition the hands need to move more back, right? We're not trying to get deeper. No. We're saying that the center of mass gets back. The center of mass of the club gets back. Because as I do this, if I start to drop and recenter and not apply any extra force to that shaft, look what it does. It lays down. The center of mass gets back behind me. Mm -hmm. But it's because the reason you chunk it is because when you're trying to make this move, you're still pulling down. You're still pulling or pushing. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you did before, basically. So yep. if you were going this way, in order to hit the ball, you had to go and throw the club down. Well, if this pattern is still there, and that's what you used to hit the ball with, and now we go like this, it won't work. Mm -hmm. So you're right when you say it won't work. You have to fix it. <laughs> You have to change something. Okay, why don't you show them, show them a couple swings of you making this move. Maybe a little exaggeration like you would do with a lesson. Okay, so I'll exaggerate the motion. Something along those lines. And even I just chunked that one slightly. You chunked it. Yeah, but I was exaggerating. <laughs> it's all good. How about one nice and slow and then we'll build it back up. I didn't chunk that one. And that was really exaggerated. Mm -hmm. On video, you'll see my rear end going back on that one. So let's do it again. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger still. Well, that's pretty much a golf swing. Purina. I think we can play with that one. Okay, so, so you guys are clear. You can still flush your irons. If anything, you'll flush them more. If you learn how to get in the ground, compress a little bit, and learn not to pull, push, throw, 
cast. How many other words can I come up with? All the ones that are, if the, if the arms are creating the power, it won't work. So part of this bowing to the golf ball is giving up, letting go, letting forces do the work for you. Exactly. Okay. This is a, this is a sport, but it's also, I think it's a way of life. It's a mental thing, right? So we have to give, we have to give up control to allow things to happen. This is why you got to slow things down, make some exaggerations. That's some good philosophy right there. You like that? I love that. Okay. Let's end it there. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, make sure you check out these other videos after this clip. And come join us at the Milo Lines Golf Academy where we can help you on an individual basis find your best matchups and play your best golf.